It's been a bit of a battle for him of late. Gibson on the low block. And he might have overpassed that time trying to find Hackett. Well, Gibson got the ball deep, and you're right. There was no double team that came. Gibson third in the Pac-10 as a freshman in, in terms of rebounding. Third overall. A lot of good freshmen in this league, Mark. Stewart. You don't think that they have a good scouting report on him, especially coming from his twin brother. And especially coming out of that timeout where Bill Self made sure that was a point of emphasis. Seven on the shot clock. He got a little bit of space and missed everything. Fell to the court. And you hear the chorus, the chant coming down of air ball from the fans. Well, and Bull Stewart not happy with that either. Approaching a minute to go now in the first half of play. USC trying to keep their undefeated record intact. And a five-game winning streak at the very least. Rush. Got a good look at it. You notice USC has stayed in this game without very much in transition. That was too quick. Hackett got stripped again by Robinson. He dribbles the ball too high, Mark, for Chalmers or Robinson. Pond with the finger roll. That's going to be a block. And Sasha Khan filling the lane nicely, Flan, as a trailer. Now that started because of a freshman mistake, but you see Sasha Khan, young man from Siberia, only been playing basketball since his sophomore year in high school, Florida Air Academy. He's still really about three weeks away mm -hmm. from being whole, recovering from that knee injury, as you mentioned, born in Russia. Didn't play basketball, interestingly enough, until the 10th or 11th grade. Uh, his coaches at school said, hey, uh, familiar story, we've heard it. You're kind of big. How'd you like to come out for the basketball team? And last year, a starter for 29 games. And he gives them that size inside. Of course, they played most of this first half without the brilliant freshman, Terrell Arthur. Two fouls. And he has been sitting a long time. Well, the key now for USC, Daniel Hackett rushed that last possession. That cost him two points. That's it. These guys dribble too high. You see the quickness. Really have to protect the basketball against Kansas. That time, Robinson a little bit overzealous, committing the foul. That's the first oh, foul oh, against oh, Russell Robinson. And there's a look at the freshman, Arthur, on the bench. Leading scorer for the Jayhawks. A brilliant game. 19 points versus Florida in the win in Las Vegas. Well, about nine days ago, 17 in the second half. Just. Really nice skill package, Mark. Young man that can shoot the turnaround, has a nice jump hook, can knock down the 15-footer. Hackett at the free throw line. Spent most of his adult life and childhood growing mm -hmm. up in Italy. Watching the likes of Manu Ginobili and Marco Yaric, a couple of NBA players now. He was a ball boy for the local Italian team. An interesting friend. He has a different perspective on the fundamentals versus the <laughs> athleticism of play, doesn't it? Well, his father told us that when he moved back to America, he knew nothing but European basketball. He was amazed at how freelance everything was, that players didn't work on their skill level. Of course, Rudy Hackett, one of the great Syracuse players of all time, 1975 Final Four. Had a successful career mm -hmm. overseas as well. And still the eighth or sixth all-time rebounder. Robinson drives it in deep. Couldn't get it. That's going to be a foul called against USC. And Cromwell got him. Jackson battling underneath. Boy, he's been a force since coming into the ball game because of the foul trouble that Arthur's had. Jackson and Khan give you two rough and tumble guys that don't need the basketball. They can do the dirty work for you, but they also, in their offense, are going to be left open quite a bit, particularly on the room. Jackson, a 70% free throw shooter on the year so far. Makes the first of two. The lead is up to four points. And he's been uh, surprisingly active. Tipped up by Kahn, and Rush gets it. Might have counted. But a pretty good first time for Rush. Although he missed that last jump shot attempt. Lodrick Stewart, one half of the twin combination with 12 points. We're at halftime. Four-point lead for the Jayhawks now to Dave Revson with the Halftime Report. Thank you, Mark. So four-point lead for Kansas at the break. In Lawrence, Dave Revson alongside Len Elmore. What would you think of the first half? 
Well, I'll tell you what, Kansas only scored 57 points uh, against DePaul in their loss Saturday, so they need to generate some offense. And the way they were doing it was through their defense. A terrific job out there in the open floor, swatting the ball, blocks, getting out in transition, getting some easy buckets. And again, Kansas averages eight steals per game in the first half alone, 11 steals. That means open floor opportunities, the ability to get out in transition and get those easy baskets. But I tell you what, you talk about Southern Cal, though, they won't go away. They keep answering. Now, this is a team that has won five straight games coming in since losing their season opener and certainly giving the Jayhawks all they can handle in the first half. We had a potential upset brewing, and we still have a interesting situation going on right now in Madison. Let's check it out. Winthrop and Wisconsin. It's Michael Jenkins hitting the three for Winthrop. Very good mid-major. Made the tourney six of the last eight years. Now time winding down. Badgers down two. It's Michael Flowers off the rebound. Tying this one up at 65. Winthrop had a chance here. They'd never beaten a ranked team despite all their successes. They get it to their big gun, Terrell Martin. He misses the three, though. It is in overtime on ESPN 360. It's a three-point lead for the Badgers right now. And Memphis and Marshall, it's actually the conference opener for both of these teams. Chris Douglas Roberts, 14 points, six rebounds for Memphis, leading the way for them, 77 to 50. They are on top right now. They went 13 and one in Conference USA last year. Coming up, the upsets just keep coming. Show you the number that Florida State did on the Gators last night. We'll see how it affected Florida's standing in the polls. And the College Hoops world still buzzing over Greg Oden's career debut. Len will tell us just how good the big guy is. That's coming up next. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Ford Shelby GT500. Bold moves. They happen every day. Michael, let's go down a little bit. Let's go down a little bit. Good. So you couldn't find a car you like here in Germany? No, I couldn't find a speed limit I liked in America. Some of the bigger stars, like Dwayne Wade, they've actually negotiated final cut of their highlights. I think that works, Dwayne. Mm. You know what? First we should go with a medium to draw the audience in. Then we should go real wide to give it a sense of context. Dwayne, we're we'll going to need that highlight. When it's ready, then we'll go. Well, but you missed two shows already. When it's ready, you think we can add a couple more defenders with CGI? That would make me look more like a hero, you know, a superhero. They're at the half in Lawrence, Kansas, looking to win for the 169th time in its last 180 home games, on top by four over USC. Last night, number four Florida going to Florida State. Joe Kim Noah and company in a battle, less than a minute to go. Gators down five, Walter Hodge hitting the three. Florida down by two, Hodge at 17. Final seconds, Gators down two, chance to take the lead. But Tony Douglas, the block on Torian Green, and Billy Donovan's team upset. They storm the court in Tallahassee, 70 to 66. Knowles is your final. Here's what it all means for the new ESPN USA Today coaches poll out today. UCLA, the new number one. Ben Howland's team up from number two after Ohio State lost to Carolina. Team Howland left behind, Pitt is second. Tar Heels, Buckeyes, Alabama rounding out the top five. Texas A&M has LSU and UCLA this week. They're sixth. And then the Gators, you see, at number seven, Washington Duke, UConn, completing the top ten. All right, Len, so there is the top ten. What does it mean at this point of the year? 
Well, I mean, people want to know if this is meaningless or not, but the bottom line is, with no dominant team emerging, with parity reigning supreme, um, with everybody playing a representative uh, pre-conference schedule, and doing it because the NCAA selection criteria mandates it, you know...